Chess friends, I hope you are doing well. Today, I have an incredible and exciting chess game that was played between the Torch Chess Engine and me. This game is very prophylactic, with profound tactics and an incredible opening. As you know, the Torch Chess Engine currently holds the second position in the world, and is the strongest chess AI, so let's get started without wasting any time. Torch started the game with e4, I played e6, and we have d4, rather than playing d5, I chose to consider c5. Attacking the pawn, the best move for white would be to consider d5, pushing the pawn forward, then moves like knight f6 knight c3 and d6 would come on the board, creating a familiar position, however, in our game, instead of d5, Todd chose c3, inviting me to consider d5 myself, playing d5 would be a good move as it leads to the advanced variation of the French defense, something like e5 creates a pawn chain in the center, and black usually considers knight c6 to attack the center, moves like queen b6. Knight e7, followed by knight f5 are all natural and good moves to consider. But in our actual game, instead of d5, I considered knight f6, then something like e5, knight d5 followed by knight f3 and knight c6 occurred, at this point, Todd could have played c4 in the opening, which is prophylactic and advantageous for him, as it challenges the knight, the move knight b4 would be a good move to consider, some players might be tempted to consider knight c7, but they don't realize that I can invade the center by playing d5, after the exchanges in the center. I would get two dominant pawns, threatening d6 or attacking the knight. A couple of moves later, when d6 is played to attack the pawn, Torch would just kick out the knight and play bishop f4 to protect the pawn, black might consider bishop e7 to play long castle, but Todd can expose this plan by playing queen a5 check, after the bishop blocks, queen e4 would come, threatening to capture the pawn and putting pieces under attack, after pawn takes e5 and queen takes e5, you can see that Torch will attack the pawn on g7 and, at the same time, threaten to play d6. Even if black castles, I will play d6 on the next move, whether you consider bishop e6 or not, it won't be a good move because I can capture the knight with a queen threat on d8, leaving Todd in a favorable position. So, we discover that playing castling is a very bad choice, this is why many chess players might think of considering f6, which looks good and is the best move, then, something like queen e4 will come, threatening to play d6 and attack your pieces, that move might be considered by torch, and additionally, your knight cannot move anywhere, the knight is completely restricted, and the bishop is pinned down to the king, the game will be over for black. Going back to the position, we discover that playing c4, would have been the best choice for torch. But he is not as intelligent as me, he played bishop c4, like a monkey with a sword trying to rule, but a monkey is always a monkey, he will not become a king, torch, playing like a monkey, moved his bishop to c4, after the knight moves back, bishop d3 is played, and I put d5 on the board, black is dominating the center because of my strong play, if you make an impulsive move like e takes d6, it won't matter because black will capture the pawn, and after you capture, your d4 pawn will be backward, not protected by other pawns. Knight b4 will come to attack the bishop, and I can win your pawn on d6, that's the reality of your position, and I will conquer everything, but in our game, Torch is not a fool, he played castle. A couple of moves later, I played knight d7, attacking the pawn on c5 and putting pressure on the pawn on e5, after rook e1, I captured on c5, Torch beautifully protects his e5 pawn because it is more important than the c5 pawn, as the bishop moves back, castle, bishop e3, and after a few moves, we have knight d2 on the board, Torch wants to place his knight on f3 and the other knight on d4, empowering the knights like two brothers fighting together. I maneuver my knight, and the bishop comes to f4, let's analyze the position now, black's king is well protected, but the knight on d7 is very restricted, the bishop on the knight's square is also restricted, and my bishops are very passive, many chess players might consider b5 to improve on the queen side, but Torch can make progress by playing knight d4 a crucial move, then, queen c7 might come to protect the knight, and white will consider rook to e3. 
This move has significant advantages for attacking Black's kingside, Torch is my subscriber, and most of my subscribers are very intelligent, reflecting what they learn from my channel, noticing that the Black kingside is fragile because Torch's pawn on e5 is creating significant pressure, preventing the knight from coming to f6, after a move like bishop e7, which might be considered by many inexperienced chess players, Torch can make a significant attack by sacrificing his bishop on the h7 square. Forcing the king out to h7, then leading to queen h5 check and rook h6 to gain control of the h-file, the position will be a burden for you, after a move like f5, which black must consider to allow the king to escape, f5 also creates a weakness on the e6 pawn, torch will capture it, making my position more vulnerable, as my queen moves back, queen g6 will arrive to attack the pawn on g7, and my knight or bishop cannot protect it, which is why I have to play rook f7 to protect that square. But it will not resolve my problem because queen h7 will lead to an instant checkmate, the game will be over for me as I have the black pieces and I have nonsensical partners like you who choose poor moves, leading to my checkmate. So, let me provide you an amazing quote from philosophy. Soon, when all is well, you're going to look back on this period of your life, and be so glad that you never gave up. However, in our actual game, I didn't make any idiotic chess moves, instead, I decided to go with f6 to improve my knight's position and the center, as captures occur on the f6 square, you can see that my knight gets activated in the center, at the same time, I get two connected pawns in the center and an open rook file, when h3 comes on the board to prevent any knight entry and hide the bishop, my knight comes to h5 to attack the bishop along with the rook. This happened in the game, knight h5 followed by bishop h2, and then my knight comes to f4, Torch maneuvered his knight and played knight e3, a crucial move because his bishop is very active there, his knights are also active like superheroes. Anytime, Torch can play knight g4, a very crucial move. So, g6 happened on the board to prevent any pieces from entering the e-square, I could push forward my pawn on e5, but it would create vulnerabilities on my king side, and my chess analysis engine suggests the g6 move despite the weakness it creates, despite this, my king side becomes weak, and I can understand with my AI intelligence that it provides me with a very bad situation because knight g4 can create significant disadvantages for me. I just played a4, and as the bishop moves, we have queen b6 on the move, many chess players might consider knight h6 check, which looks very tempting. Go, knight. Show your real power. The great knight, the valiant knight who can swim in the ocean, run in the field, and fly in the sky, knight h6 looks good, attacking the king, but when my king moves to g7, attacking your knight, what will you do? Bishop takes f4 does not bring any advantages for you, although it is the best move to consider, you have to retreat your knight temporarily, then, I can gain significant advantages by capturing the pawn on h3, checking the king, and as the knight captures, you will notice that the queen's diagonal is wide open, pinning your pawn, I can attack your bishop and capture it with my bishop, leaving your pawn pinned, the rook has an open file, and the white king will face a bad situation around the king side. That is why a few moves ago, Torch didn't consider h6 because he is a powerful chess AI, instead, he exchanged his battery with an electromagnetic battery, future technology that will not reduce its charge and will automatically recharge in sunlight, processing very high, now, the question is, where should the knight move? Knight h5 should be a good move because all other knight moves are very fragile, although the best move is to consider knight takes h3, many chess players might consider knight h5 because they lack intelligence, I will consider knight g5 on the board, and as the bishop moves, Torch will sacrifice his knight on the h7 square, forcing the king to capture. Torch will consider queen h6 check, supported by the knight, as the king moves, queen takes g7 followed by queen h7 check will lead to a checkmate, the game will be over for black. Going back to the position, we discovered that playing knight h5 is a vulnerable choice, that's why Torch captured the pawn on h3 square, which looks like a better choice, but your knight is no longer on f4 to protect the pawn on g6, 
that's why Torch played a cunning move, bishop f6, getting access to this diagonal. Many chess players again might make a blunder and play bishop e7, then Torch will have the chance to consider knight h6 check, checking the king, and the game will be over for black. Going back to the position, noticing that knight h6 might come on the board, many chess players might consider h5 to attack the knight, and provide some escape for the king, then Torch will consider knight h6 check anyway, forcing the king to move, and knight g5 check will follow, a very dangerous check, it thus sacrifices the knight on the h6 square because the king has literally no square to run, and after that, knight h7 followed by queen h6 check will arrive, and consequently, it will be a checkmate. The game will be over for me, and Torch will win again, however, I would not let that checkmate happen. So, in this position, instead of playing h5, I just captured his bishop on the f6 square, sacrificing the rook right away, not only can Torch play the best moves, but I can also sacrifice my rook, after the check, the king goes here, the knight moves back to g4, and you can see that he is threatening to consider queen h6, where it will attack the knight and the pawn simultaneously, my knight is trapped in the black coffin and cannot escape, which is why we have e5. The knight moves back to protect the other knight, and consequently, it blocks the bishop's diagonal from being protected. So, playing h5 might be a desirable choice for many chess players to kick out the knight, but Torch can just capture the pawn on g6, sacrificing the bishop right away to play a queen check, forcing the king to move, and after the check, he will pick up the knight on the next move and win the game easily, that's his tactic. So, let me provide you an inspirational quote. Breaking free from the imprisonment of old habits is one of the most beautiful ways to grow. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing h5 is a very bad choice, that's why we have bishop f8, and with king g2, attacking the knight because the knight is trapped and cannot escape, we have a bishop move there, and when the king goes to the h3 square to capture the knight, you can see that Torch's knight gets pinned by my bishop, which is why I played h5, attacking the knight, as the king moves, I pick up the knight, and we have queen g5 attacking the pawn. There is a sequence of exchanges on the g4 square, and after a couple of moves, we have rook b1, a pawn captured, and rook h1 on the following move, which attacks my bishop. So, what should I do in this position? Try to think a little bit, because this position is very crucial and significant, I just capture the bishop, forcing Torch to capture my bishop, back because I can win his rook on the next move, but Torch holds a significant advantage in this position because my king is very lonely and disadvantaged, he played a rook check, and where should the king go? The king cannot go to these squares, and if the king goes to the e8 square, Torch will have significant advantages by playing queen e6, attacking the knight and threatening to play rook h8 check, winning the rook, the game will be over for me. So, going back to the position, we just have king f6, and now Torch played queen h4, attacking the knight because the knight is under attack by two pieces, as the king moves, the rook captures, and after the queen check, queen g5 followed by queen d5 happened on the board, you can see that these pawns are trying to protect the black king from being attacked by Torch's pieces, we have queen e1 followed by queen b5 and rook c7 check, and where should the king move now? If the king goes to the d2 square, which looks desirable for many chess players, then after queen b2 check followed by queen c2, it will lead to a checkmate because the game will be over for you. Going back to the position, noticing king d2 is not possible, which is why if the king goes to d1, it will result in the same position, as I will play queen b1 check, checking the king, as the king moves, we will capture the e4 pawn, and as the king moves, white will consider queen c2 check, and you can see that the game will be over, and torch will win, again, the game is just vulnerable, and torch is completely winning because my king is in a very passive state, unable to escape. So I played queen c3, we have queen takes b7, and a couple of moves later, he just captured the queen, and in the end game, he is up a queen, I am losing the game because, with the black pieces, it is very difficult to defend against white, he has the white pieces, 
and it's very difficult for me to defend the position now, he just captured the rook and consequently checkmated me in the following moves. I will take revenge on Torch in the near future, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new from my chess video, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, take care, see you soon.